Next time, tell me to choose a better sample. Hello guys, it's Unders here for WarriorSound.co.uk and what we're going to do is just have a look at how you can flip a sample in Logic as in just chop it up and then maybe get it assigned to some keys really quickly. So let's get straight into this. What we've got here is this uh, grimy vinyl sounding violin piece. And that will do and we're just gonna have a little flip around idea with this and try and see what we can bring out of it so really simple the first thing I'd want to do is get this in sync with my project so we could work out the BPM of this what I would actually generally do is go up the top here get the BPM of the track that I'm working on so ideally you might already have some drums out or you know the sort of BPMs you work in I'm a big fan of 88 for this sort of thing so we're gonna drop that to 88 and we see it snaps there and uh, it's still out of time though it's not exactly what we're after right so what we'll do we can click on it like that if we press u that gives us a loop around it and it's given us a six bar loop but we can see it's all out of time it's not really on point of what we are after so let's try and work out the timing for it in a super fast cheap method up the top here we've got the ability to turn on flex time we can also do that with command and f like so and didn't really see anything change apart from the menu over here on the left hand side changed and we can now enable flex edit on there and oh look it's worked out the timing for us and has snapped it to some newfound grid still not perfect because we know there's a bit of silence at the end but it assumes the audio would be the end of the loop so what we need to do is just drag it back here and we now can see that it's eight bars and it's pretty much on point now it was obviously played live so there's uh, some timing discrepancies Let's check it sounds okay. Oh, we've maybe pushed it a little bit far. What we can try is rhythmic slicing and see if that works instead. Oh, definitely not super rhythmic though. Um, let's give you a go. Nope. Um, it's probably gonna end up being polyphonic. Monophonic's not too bad. Let's just compare that to poly. I'm going to roll with monophonic there. So what we could do from here, we could tidy it up and use some of our flex markers to get it more on time. But instead, I'm going to turn this off only turn it off up the top here. We don't want to disable it on this channel just so we're no longer in that flex mode and we can still cut it up and edit it. Now, Logic's going to try and be smart here and it will cut and move samples around and it's absolutely fine. So we're going to cut some chops out here that we like and what we're going to do is just tidy it up so that everything starts on a sample as well. And what we can do is put some little fades in in places as well. And if I press T and I, that's how I'm getting that scissor tool up nice and quickly there. And the reason I just put some little fades in the end is it helps us not have pops and clicks when we get this into uh, either Alchemy or the EXS sample. And we get some better sounds out. As a result, it's just less work for us in the long run. Let's cut those out. Have those, have those, have that. Yeah, we're just doing this as an example here. So we're going to bin off the rest of that sample. Gonna drop a couple of fades in here. You can as well, if you want the same fade across everything, just highlight the whole lot and do one fade. But uh, just find it better if we just do them all subtly like that. So let's drop these back, have a listen. Yeah, we seem all right. There's nothing majorly wrong there or anything really missing. So what we're going to do now is highlight all of these guys. And if we use right click 
we can do convert to new sampler track. You can also do that with control and E, and that's going to give us uh, an ESX24. Now, in this case, we're going to choose regions. Um, we can do transient markers. I'm going to show you that in just a sec. And that was why we used the flex pitch as well, because we can use those transient markers just to bring it straight in really, really quickly. And we'll just keep the same name and it can be similar key assignments, no problemo. So here it's now dropped in an ESX24 for us and it's made that patch. More importantly, it's assigned to keys as well. If you remember, we set it all the way back to uh, working the minus C here. So just make sure your octaves are rolled back on your keyboard and, which means I can now, and we can maybe work out a new pattern. So let's really quickly just throw a drummer in here instead of doing a drum loop. Let's go drummer. Let's go hip hop and whatever it gives us, we're gonna work with that. Cool, so that's one way you can really quickly build up a sample patch just by chopping a sample and assigning it to some keys. That's assuming you didn't just wanna flip the sample from the samples up here in the top. So the other way we could do this was we had a load of flex pitch markers, didn't we, made in here. Remember when we put flex pitch on and it gave us all our crazy markers? So if we now have that on, we can do the same thing. If we right click, we could slice it all, all the transient markers, but we're not interested in doing that right now. We're gonna create a new sampler tracker. Remember, we can just do that straight off with Control and E or we can click on it and do it this way. This time we're gonna do transient markers. We're gonna call it Grammy Violin Trans because, well, that's what we've done. And that gives us a real similar thing going on here when it loads a patch up, right? So if we do you. Oh, and that way it just does exactly the same thing, creating an EXS24 patch for us, but out of the transient markers. So hopefully guys, that's a nice little tip for you and a really quick way to build up some custom samples just uh, by chopping stuff up and getting it in those EXS24s. Next time, tell me to choose a better sample. See you on the next one.